Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And I've got a good one for you today because it is a sell everything market right now. And, um, you know, backed by popular demand, you guys kept asking for Bob Kudla. And uh, he says, well, I'm going to have lunch down at the Montage. Why don't you show up there? So I showed up here. So thank you, Bob, so oh, much for welcome. being here. And uh, uh, but uh, I love that sell everything. You think, so you think that we're in kind of turmoil right now? Yeah, I don't want to be the purveyor of doom, but the uh, the way the market's set up right now, between now and the uh, middle of October, it's uh, you, you want to be short the markets or you want to be in cash. Okay. Well, uh, please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But you know what? Let's go sit down. Let's just yeah. go sit and and uh, and uh, park it and uh, talk about all this stuff. Okay? Sure. Hey, Bob, uh, thank you for joining me and thank you for letting me pull you away from your family for a little bit. Um, you know, you're my go to guy for trading and I have all these people that always message me and ask me questions about, you know, Bob Kudla's opinion and what's Bob think of this and what's Bob think of that. But since we've been talking for a year or so, I mean, it's been I mean, it's crazy right now. Things are very precarious, to say the least, right now. And, uh, you know, am I wrong in thinking that or you think that this is all going to be fixed? Or uh, is it just a big short festival right now? No, I, th I think, you know, uh, we're joking about the sell everything market, but we're really at a point now where, so it's really interesting. If you, if you remember when you were a kid and a teenager and you, you wanted to get out of the house, and but your parents were still awake, mm -hmm. and you're like, who's going to, you know, are they gonna, am I going to fall asleep before they go to sleep and I sneak out? Well, that's what's kind of been happening between the Fed and the Treasury. So the Fed has been trying to take liquidity which means take money out of the markets for speculation but at the same time the treasury's been um we spent 1.6 trillion dollars do you believe that 1.6 trillion dollars since june and they, we're at 33 put, trillion dollar national trillion debt right now so um it's kind of bad news good news kind of a thing because um right now we're at a point now where where the junkie is at the very end so they just have to constantly getting the to get the hits or this whole thing rolls over. Well, she's at the point now where they, they've been doing these what's called treasury bills and they can only do them for so long. And she now has to roll her into what's called longer duration debt. Mm -hmm. And when she does that, it's like a giant sucking sound out of the stock market. Okay. And, and this is when you say sell everything is even oil. When we were on, I forget when we were on, maybe June we were together. Mm -hmm. And um, so in June I said, buy energy. Remember, I said, get uranium, get coal, get oil, get natural gas, all of the above. Didn't you have some one killer call during that time? I mean, well, what, chemical, I CCJ, yeah. Okay. What'd that do? Uh, 28 to 40 as of yesterday. I just sold it today um, and um, this morning. And then ExxonMobil, um, which is my family's largest position. We, you know, we, we, um, we own quite a bit of it. And, and uh, we... When it hit 102, it kind of dropped down. I said, that's why I said to you, say, Dan, this thing's going to rocket through the summer. And ExxonMobil, which is one of the largest companies in the world, went up 18%, which is just ridiculous. Wow, it is ridiculous. And so, yeah, so we're actually, um, by the end of this week, we're going to be pulling off our extra that we have on there and just going back to our family core position. Now, now oil is uh, per barrel it's like 92 dollars a barrel right now do yeah you, do you think some of the speculation of well over 100 i heard uh one guy on one of the news shows today talking that gold uh, that gold that oil could hit 300. he's like it could we could see numbers we've never seen in our lifetime yeah i mean it's possible now because uh and, and you know me i am not prone to uh hyperbole mm -hmm. so uh uh we'll get a pullback here in the next um 30 60 days just because the way the markets are set up right now. Um, basically, what we call the the late longs, the people getting these things late, start losing money, they bail out, pushes the market down. But we, the, the way you look at the oil markets in rectangles. So we move back up into the higher rectangle, which mm -hmm. takes us to 135. Now I'm not saying 135, wow. but it's it, but that rectangle. What, is, what does gasoline look like at 135 when you've got today eight, LA uh, County eight dollars uh, a gallon easily easily I I said we're going to see ten dollars as I've seen seven here already at some ga gas yeah. stations and it's well above six in LA County right now. Yeah, that's why I call um, Joe Biden you know Joe Carter because uh, <laughs> he's having the same problem with what, what Carter's going to have. He thinks that he's going to be able to change people's social. Way they, way they live their life. What he's going to really get is a lot of really, really angry people. And, and um, it's, it's not going to work. Um, but the problem with oil is, is that they've stifled it so much production here. 
he's now talking about draining this the strategic petroleum reserve. I mean, you know, the people aren't screaming it's crazy, but that's going to pick it up. But back to your three hundred dollar thing. Once you get over one thirty five, you know, we've hit almost two hundred dollar barrel before before the two thousand and eight great financial mm -hmm. crisis. So yeah, well, um, that was and and then we saw gas, you know, through the roof back then too. So. Yeah. And this time, it, it'll, it would be worse. But it'll wipe everybody out. You, you mentioned spending. One thing that's crazy right now is that uh, they did an interview, and the, the story will be below on this. 90% of the people out there say that they're, gonna, uh, that they're pulling back on spending right now and that they're spending less money on uh, unnecessary purchases and that this is going to be the bleakest holiday season, which I keep talking about. I keep saying that people don't have the money for Thanksgiving, people don't have the money for Christmas and Hanukkah, and that they are pulling back right now. So we're going to see yep. more of that. Yeah, I mean, look, the way people's psychology works is that you have, you know, it, it's not the absolute amount of money you have. It's the amount of money that you have that you like to spend. You, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I call it psychic dollars. So, you know, if, if all I'm doing is living to work, you know, and I'm talking generally, I'm an angry person. Okay. Absolutely. And I'm going to lash out. But if I have that little extra, I could take the vacation. I can go out to eat maybe once or twice a month. I'm talking nice out to eat, not, mm -hmm. you know, not or, Applebee's, right. Yeah. But now what happens in our economy, we're geared for that psychic spending. So what, what you have a situation where you have what's called um, non-essential services. So, you know, people like dog grooming, buying a dog, owning a dog, massages, uh, gym memberships. Uh, All, you know, your cable TV. I have more people yeah. telling me that they're cutting back on cable, cutting back on, on uh, cell phone service, uh, excess everything they're cutting back on absolutely everything right yeah now. so you reach a point where when that is drying up and you know california that's that's one hundred and forty thousand dollars a year depending on where you live yeah you know so you you can't make it look i have a 22 year old daughter going out into the world and you know three of them are going to try to cram in together up in orange california yeah you know and in between the three of them they make two hundred thousand dollars a year but it's funny, my son's going to college and there's four guys running a house together yeah. doing the same thing. And uh, I mean, it'll be great memories, good times, but budget, you know, literally, you know, I, one of my proudest days as a parent was when he sat down and I'm like, how the hell are you going to do this? And he goes, let me show you. And he pulled out a piece of paper and had it all written out for me. And I thought, oh, wow, if he's never listened to anything in my life other than this right now, that was great. But yep. tight, strategic living that way but more and more adults are living that way and as as you walked up and talked to me so many people right now are losing their jobs yep. so many people are in such a, a different spot than they were uh, a year ago and people are of the mindset that things aren't going to change and they have changed dramatically yeah and look you know people are getting older so um you know my friend groups in the 50s and 60s and when those people lose their jobs they're gone yeah. You're not making that kind of money ever again. And if you have a mortgage or you have kids in school, I mean, you have to sell your house. I've known so many people now that literally have sold and moved out of state because they, the only way they can get liquidity to survive. I knew somebody went out of the country and he called me the other day and said, you know, I'm, I'm struggling even here. You wow. know, you're not, people aren't making enough 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 money. You know, it's kind of scary and sad. See, you, you know. You know, we, as we're walking down here and I said, you know, let's get in front of the water and film. Um, you know, I think we're in a recession and you think this is that we're going to be tumbling towards it. Well, what we're going to tumble towards, I think, is going to be much worse than the R word. I really do. Oh, we're already in a recession. So if I said that, I misspoke. You know, technically, we've been in a recession since 2022. So, you know, growth of the economy is less than the CPI. So that's that's recession. OK. Now, the next thing is the Fed's meeting later today, and we're going to, well, they're already meeting right now, and uh, they're going to announce today what they're going to do. And what do you think uh, Jerome Powell's going to do? What do you think the final results are going to be from this, uh, this meeting? Yeah, so the, the, the betting pool says a skip this time, you know, which would be two in a row. And, uh, but at the very worst, because of the way energy's going, and is that um, they, he may raise a quarter, or he may say, we're going to skip, but we're likely to raise again. Okay. That's probably where we are. But they're really at the end of their rope right now because they can't keep pushing. They can't keep pushing the rates up any higher. They're, they're actually destroyed commercial real estate. They're destroying regular real estate. In fact, car dealerships can't get financing for their cars anymore. 
Right. It's, the, it's, the, it's the horrible. BMO just left the, the market. So unless you're unless you're 700 or 750, um, uh, what, what do you call it? FICO score. score. FICO score higher. I don't borrow money. Um, that you can't, um, can't you can't get, get a loan. You can't get a car. And so, and you need a hundred thousand dollars to get a new car. So the used car market is going to plunge. So if you're in a car market, wait six months. You're going to get deals oh, like, like you, you never believe. imagined. Like you never imagined. It's going to it's going to get worse now. Um, you run Trade Genius. Last month we had a webinar that was very successful, and I was really pleased with that. But uh, you know, you always give me bundles and things like that. And you were like, "Hey, I put together a bundle for you. Can can you do me a favor and and have it under?" DanLovesTrading.com uh, to take a look at all your stuff. Yeah. So, um, if you guys want to uh, check out Bob's stuff, please do. It's at www.DanLovesTrading.com. Uh, but uh, tell everybody about Trade Genius and what you do. Yeah, so we've created a couple we consider pretty effective algorithms. And the way we look at the market is, is if you think of it as a sine wave, so the market oscillates between um, channels. And so what we do is we look at momentum, we look at angle, and we look at those oscillators. Mm -hmm. And we basically built an algorithm that tries to catch it where we think it's the best opportunity for it to go um, higher and to uh, high probability of profit, we call it. And so we have a win rate over 67% right now. And we have what's called a positive profit factor, which means that when we win, we win more money than when the trades that lose. Yeah. And the other thing mm -hmm. is, is that regardless of where the market's headed, whether it's going up or it's going down, that's what you're into, and yeah. and and, it, and uh, you'll win all over the place. So yeah, we um, don't we don't care what the market does. Yeah, so yeah, which um, is great. Now, in the last week, let's just talk about the last week. Like you were telling me as we we're walking down here about one of your uh, people in your system that was making more money on this than he was on his uh, uh, retirement. Uh, yeah. So tell and, that um, story real quick. And I think what I'll do too, I'll send. They, they send me notes. I'll send them over to you too. You can put them in oh, okay, for people cool. if you want. But absolutely. But yeah, one guy got on today. We have two groups. We have a group that. Um, and what I'll do is I'll do a bundle for people that just want basic stuff. Okay. And people that want to be in the group that actually could talk to me every day. Okay. And um, and so what we do is um, um, we create a system where people that want to trade more often because they need the cash to. Um, there are a lot of times they're retired or they're not working anymore. And, and he, he just got on. He goes, hey, I just want to let you know, Bob, that uh, I made $2,700 in the last two weeks. And that's more than my pension for the month. Oh, that's great. And I'm really del delighted for that. And I, was, I don't care about the numbers so much. I care that actually people are listening yeah. and they're making money. And so, you know, that's what helps me you know, keep doing this because I like to pe 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 see people be successful. Okay. So, so Clearly, oil is going to go up. What about you know other energies? I know you're big on nuclear, and you think nuclear is going to be huge. So is uh, and lithium, and uh, you know, are, are you into solar, wind power, anything like that, or do you think it's more nuclear and more uh, 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 lithium and things like that? Yeah, I'm, I'm more into the uh, the base energy. Um, I'm not a, even though I owned a solar energy company. Uh, I think uh, solar's probably reached its. Um, it's max for right now. Wind energy is a bust, and you can't really trade it. And so, but right now, Dan, between now and probably the next time we talk in the next four to six weeks, maybe if we can get together again, um, we'll see all that down. Okay. Just because the market's going to go down. But having said that, you're going to want to buy the dip going into November. Okay. Okay. So I, I love to sell everything. Okay. So. You know, Michael Burry, famously, the, he was the one that called the housing debacle in 2008, prior to that, and bet against housing in the United States and was very successful at that. And with that, earned this, you know, championship, you know, belt of, of financial investing. And then you get other people that are trying to, to keep up with him, Bill Ackman and a couple other people that want to call things. But you're making this bold prediction that things are going to go down and go south right now. Um, Anything else that, that's leading you to that, down that road? Yeah, there, there's a number of things. So the market is not really driven by cash flow anymore. It's really driven by the Fed, the Treasury, the banking reserves, and then the speculators on the option side. And so they reached a point now where you can't push on that string anymore. Mm -hmm. And when you can't push anymore, you get a snapback. And that's a snapback. And it always comes in this mid-September 
to mid-October time frame. That's why you always say, people always say, oh, the crash is coming in September and October. This is why, this is kind of like a high tide being pushed in. Okay. It has to come back out. The speculators have to close their positions and they close them at the end of every quarter. So that's why September is always a, a, a bad month. Uh, at the end of September, you know, you look at the end of June, you look at the end of March, you look at the end of December, those are the most volatile periods. Well. They pushed on that so hard that they have to come out at the end of the month. Okay. So I'm not making, we're going to crash. I'm not making that kind of call. You're just saying it's... it's Everything's going to sell. It's just sell. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> that's that's bold. So, okay, metals, if everything, it, it, you know, it, okay, if the Fed raises interest rates today uh, a quarter of a point, is it good for gold? Good for <laughs> silver? Or No. Okay. If, if the Fed pauses, <clears throat> then <clears throat> you may get a relief rally today. Okay. And then... Um, and then depending on what they say in their conference, gold and silver may take off from here. Okay. So, but if they keep raising and they keep being restricted and liquidity keeps coming out, it's going to affect gold and silver. Oil is a different animal. Oil, actually, if you look at oil and you look at interest rates, people are protecting themselves from higher interest rates with oil. Okay. So if he raises again and the, and the 10 year goes higher, oil will tend to move with that. Which brings up a good point, the 10 year yield on bonds. I mean, that is, it, it's at, what, a 27-year high? What's the, it's, it's high right now. And, right. Uh, um, you know, where do you think this is going to go? I mean, it's, it's killing uh, real estate right now. Orange County Register yesterday had a great article about how, we're, you know, uh, that housing sales are off 38% year over year. Uh, since 1990, we have not seen the activity this slow for all of sales. So you can sit there and mm -hmm. say, oh, you know, that's Laguna Beach. No, all of Southern California, all San Diego, Orange County, L.A. This is just huge right now how it's killing uh, yeah. the market with these high interest rates. And, you yeah. know, like you said, people can't borrow money. Well, a lot, some people are stuck um, being, you know, house poor again, where they own this house. They can't get out of it. Um, they're, they're, they're paying a, a very high payment right now. And uh, that's going to affect things as well, too. Yeah. Um, if For people in real estate listening today, um, you probably don't want to hear this message from me, but real estate has probably reached its highest in my lifetime. So unless we hyperinflate, the, from, real estate is not going to be the investment for you. You know, we have a lot of things coming at it. We have demographics. Okay, we have taxes that are going to keep going higher. We have insurance now. I, I don't know if you noticed this. And then maintenance on these homes. So there's so many things hitting the market. And <clears throat> this is a national audience. In Florida, you know, my cost of ownership in California is going to be lower than your cost of ownership in Florida. Yeah, you're going to see crazy things like that. Yeah. And, and I did a story last week about uh, the top 10, uh, uh, you know, uh, property taxes around the country. And California is not even in the top 10. So, right. you know, and, and again, it's Looneyville and we have all the things, Commie Ford and you know, all the stuff you guys send me. Uh, but as far as that, it's it's high price for the property, but you're paying less than the taxes. Yeah, a lot of people don't know if you're in California. I pay our food costs are lower than people in Florida too. So, yeah. um, and southern, southeast United States because I just I just been there, you know, and I just laugh. I look at this. It's just more expensive than my when I live here, you know. But and look at we got, <laughs> you know, we hate the politics. We love the area. But yeah. here's a trait for you guys though, if you want one. So. Um, if this real estate goes as I expect, Airbnb is dead meat. Okay. The uh, CEO has been selling it like crazy, just like same as the CEO of Nvidia. That's a tell. He's the closest to the he's the closest to the knowledge. Absolutely. And you, you don't sell something if you think it's going to go higher. You sell something because you think it's going to go lower. And so uh, Airbnb is in a particularly vulnerable position. So um, I trade puts on it. Uh, if you're in our VIP room, which is one of the bundles that I have, I have set up for you, is uh, you, um, I call those trades out. If you're in the basic room, uh, we don't trade options in that room. Okay. And so, but uh, we just made a beautiful trade on it um, this week on Airbnb. We did it last week, and Airbnb is is obnoxiously overvalued right now. Think if, of if that's all a technical the, term. Yeah. Yeah. Think of all the people that went out and bought properties. And well, you're going to make, you know, who cares what your payment is? You're going to make, you know, five times that in a month. And now you have all these restrictions around the country and it is catching up with these people and people don't have the money and then they're, nope. they're charging more. And again, I would rather stay in a hotel room myself 
because I can get extra towels, extra shampoo, extra things like that, and not have to worry about that. And, and uh, the ridiculous cleaning deposits that they're getting for Airbnb now is nuts. Right yeah, now. You're, you're, you're crazy, Airbnb. So I live in Laguna Niguel. They just passed an ordinance 30 days. A lot of these people got financing because they're looking at a 75% uh, occupancy rate at $200 a day for 30 days. Okay, now they're looking at maybe getting uh, $4,000 a month, a total. And, and But that's only 75% occupancy. Yeah. You know, so a lot of these guys are going to be going upside down. They're going to be like, hey, this isn't worth it. I got to bail out. And, and you know, once that happens, uh, goes down. And plus, a lot of these guys didn't just buy one property. They, they daisy, they, they daisy yeah. chained them. Oh they used gosh. the collateral for one to get loaned. And we've seen this before in 2006. Mm. People so. have written me and said, this is never going to be like that. We're not going to see the 2008 debacle. Remember, 2008 led to 2009, 11, 12. I mean, it didn't pick back up because one thing that we did see was interest rates were going down and so were prices of houses during that time too. And yep. a, a, a couple of great real estate agents out of uh, um, Vegas said the same thing. They go, look, this is, this is what can happen, but this time... Things are up here as far as price. You're going to see it drop even more. Yeah, so. they're dreaming. You'll you'll be begging for 2008 kind of activity when this is all said. Yeah, and done. see, you know what's funny, Bob? I sit there and I've said, what if these are the good times? What <laughs> if this is as good as it gets, and we it goes a lot worse? Because you know, you have friends that have lost their job. You have, you know, I know people that have lost their jobs that would never uh, think about losing their jobs. I know somebody that said, hey, listen. Um, uh, in the medical space. Hey, listen, we were talking to everybody about uh, raises and moving forward and put together your letters and uh, as to why you think you're worth more money. And all these people did this in the company and they came back and they said, we have no money for raises. And I'm like, why would you do, why would you put people through that and knowing that you're not going to write a check for a dollar more? So it's horrible. But that's... Trying to find out who the greedy people yeah, were. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> that's the sign of the times too. It's, it really is. So... You're going to see a lot of people that you never expect to lose your job, lose their job. Well, and Google just laid off their almost entire recruiting staff. Yeah. That should just tell you everything. Yeah, we're at a peak, we're at peak technology for this cycle. So uh, that's going to be a trade opportunity for us. And, and like I said, you know, people say you're always so calm about this stuff. It's good because you, you know are. what? We, we roll the sectors that are always making money. Uh, you know, so once energy rolls off, it's going to, believe it or not, the 10-year yield will fall. Okay, and okay. Uh, you know, uh, now real estate may get a slight bump from that, but it's never going to come back to where it was. So, you know, and and you buy just TLT. Starting um, um, twenty twenty two, we were at three percent, and then now it's over seven. Yeah. So and that is night and day, and that's the thing, Bob. It's like guys like you and I, you know, we got good credit, but. We're self-employed, so you know we're not the ideal uh, borrower of real estate because we have uh, don't have a regular you know uh, W-2 and things like that. A lot of these people are paying well over eight percent right now, and I'm seeing this all over the place. And HOA fees, insurance fees, um, you know. And I've been telling people, have been writing me. Hey, my husband really wants to buy the house. Well, can you get insurance on the house? You mm -hmm. know, and and they're writing. Oh no, we're having. It's really it's a lot more than the people are paying right now. You're going to see that time and again. You know? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, <clears throat> you can't afford a house, you can't afford a car, okay? You can't afford to go out to eat, you can't afford vacation. So everybody's going to be hunkered down. And then people get surly. When they get surly, they don't spend or they don't invest. Then companies get scared and it causes that. You heard that phrase, the fourth turning. Well, that's the, what causes the turning is that people retrench. And then they realize, you know what, I didn't really need to spend that kind of money. And then, and then, well, if they have common sense, some right. some morons could just live. Through, I'll get paid. You know that my my. It's funny. My son getting this house was a good thing because it's like, oh wait, I got to pay this in four weeks, and he doesn't live. You know, eggs Benedict to eggs Benedict every day, and he's saving his money. Um, a lot of people don't do that though. A lot of people just spend, spend, spend. So. Uh, what about like insurance companies? Are, are those a good investment right now? Or do you think it's so precarious with like, you know, there's only two auto insurance companies that are writing insurance right now in California. You know, um, it's hard to say. They've had a good run, some of the insurance companies, because they benefit from the higher interest rates. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but I think they probably, they're probably maxed out right now too, because the claims are starting to uh, match that increase they had in, in what they call a, uh, their deposits coming in. Banks are atrocious right now. 
<clears throat> there's no real industry group right now that you, you'd want to be in. <clears throat> I mean, look at com even consumer staples is going down. That's like toothpaste, soap, things you Absolutely. have to Clorox. buy. Clorox is blaming their downturn on a ransom attack. I just covered that yesterday. And I'm like, okay, well, sales are down. And also Clorox, you know, has, has the price per gallon at five five oh nine a gallon is the highest it's ever been. So yep. all these businesses <clears throat> they have to pay for the higher you know, the, the, the higher gas tax. We can call it the Ukrainian war tax that we're getting. And and this is the this is what you're paying for everywhere you turn when you uh, when you buy something. Everybody mm -hmm. has to pay to get it to where it needs to go. And if we push up and I think we will. You know, we may pull back some, but I'm firmly convinced that we'll be over $100 oil by by the end of the year. Okay. So, um, and if we're not, we're in a, we're going into the depression. Okay. So, pick your poison. Pick your poison. Pick your poison. I keep looking over behind the camera to see if your wife's going to walk up. So, oh. um, <laughs> just a few more things. Let's let's cover. Um, she let's, she'll call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk trade genius real quick. One more time, okay? And um, yeah. you know, uh, a little bit of your background. You've been doing this for a very long time. And uh, um, tell her a little bit more about trade genius real quick, and uh, and we'll cover that again. Yeah. So um, you know, I've been trading since 1990. I have had two corporate executive jobs, and when I turned 46, <clears throat> I actually was in mergers and acquisitions, and I got actually mergered out on my job. Instead of going back in again, I said to my wife, I said, hey, I'm young enough to try something on my own, but I'm not too old where I couldn't get another job. So I went ahead and uh, started trading on my own. I have a fan here. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then once I finished that, I started a solar energy company. And then my friend said, hey, you're trading things pretty good. You want to start a trading company? One thing led to the other, and that's where Trade Genius came. Wow. I've been doing it for eight years now. I never look back. Um, you know, where else, awesome. can, where else can you have a job where you don't have to shave? I'm normally in board shorts and uh, and you get to live your life the way you want. Yeah, your wife made you put the long sleeve shirt on for the uh, for montage <laughs> he, today. He, he always gives me a hard time to always show up in shorts. Oh, my God, because this guy is like, I still get people that are like, oh, my gosh, you know that guy? Yeah, it, okay. So, so you're, you're, you're the real you're deal. Lo but, you're, you're locked out. Oh, no, no, but you're the real deal because, uh, I mean, so, you know, we're just in a, we're in a, the wave is cresting moment. Is that what you'd say? And it's going to go down for a little bit? And yeah. You know, here's how, how I think it's going to happen. We'll, we should sell off uh, into November, into October. And then believe it or not, even, even if we're recessionizing, the market may still rise into the end of the year, just because of the way the derivatives are set up. Okay. But going into 2024, the recession is locked. Nobody can even say they're not in a recession anymore. Okay. And then, and then from there, you'll see a retrenchment. And we think we think it's an L-shaped. So we're thinking all the way to 2025. It's going to affect cryptocurrencies too. So we think the crypto markets are going to come down maybe 20, 25 percent for Bitcoin. Don't don't hate me, okay? Because um, we own a lot of it. And so, but that's just the way it is. It needs to do that pullback before we get a. Uh, I think a bigger move coming into 2025. Did you hear that uh, Mark Cuban got hit his uh, MetaMask wallet? He got a phishing uh, thing, mm -hmm. and it took all his uh, took 900 grand out of his MetaMask wallet. I so. mean, what was he looking at? Yeah, exactly. But you know, um, protect yourself. You know, it's uh, it, it's going to be very, very interesting moving forward. And I always love that I can call you and talk to you and get your skinny. So metals, you think right now? Where do you think metals are going? Yeah, so my only caveat to going down is if the Fed gives a hard pause and says, "Hey, we're done," uh, gold and silver miners are gonna are gonna skyrocket. Okay. So you have to own these things. That's the problem. You have to have some energy. You have to have some Bitcoin. You have to have some some gold and silver, but you have to really retrench from this stuff. Okay. Yeah. But energy, energy's going up, and winter's coming fast. Winter comes very fast every year, and it's not like this all the time. And, yeah. You know. It gets cold, and uh, so uh, what about uh, natural gas, anything like that? Is there any, any of those that you really like? Yeah, um, well, I own um, the natural gas called EQT. It's the number one natural gas uh, producer in the United States. Their potential takeout, takeout target for ExxonMobil, so it's a good one to own. And uh, But natural gas has been really struggling to push higher. They've been draining all the, um, 
all the storage. Any di any uh, dividends or anything like that with those companies? You know, they're like all getting bought out. We just had one with ethanol. The company just got bought out. Um, the one I had with natural gas just got bought out. There's, there's one that's in liquid propane called LPG. It pays a, a dollar dividend. The stock's at $27. So wow. we bought it at 18. We sold it at, at 28. It went down to 25, back to 27. I haven't bought it back yet, but I'm, I'm tempted. Okay. Because, you know, I try to, I have a mix between trading profit or and dividend profit you know okay. for my family so yeah. uh but that's a good one for you guys though and i, I like that one a lot okay. and uh and then but you know from the gold and silver side i'm still i you know i own barrett gold i own freeport mcmoran i own hecla i own cde i own wheat and precious metals so those are the ones that i own okay and the oil side i'm all large cap okay. oil and gas exxon mobile oxy Canadian Natural. I just sold PBR to Brazilian company. Okay. Nice profit. Just because I'm starting to he's, trim back. He's talking Pabst Blue Ribbon. No, I'm, kidding, I'm, kidding. I'm from Pennsylvania. No. That would work. <laughs> I want to thank I want to thank you first of all for doing this and uh, um, uh, Mrs. Bob for agreeing to this because uh, again I know I'm going to see her in a second. Um, please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to take a look at. Uh, DanLovesTrading.com. Get Bob's bundles that he put together for yeah. you. And uh, I know you got some homework to do uh, to go get that put together this morning. Well, so. I know. well they probably already announced it. So okay. we better get going. Hey, hey, real quick, too, if I you don't mind a plug here, check our podcast that we do it every day. Trade okay. Genius Podcast. Trade Genius. It's on uh, YouTube, guys, too. It is. So onward and upward. If you want to get a hold of me, uh, hello at, uh, at iallegedly.com. And also, uh, don't forget to join the email list, too. And thank you, Bob. Always. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having me.